Hi, and welcome to Wednesday night children's Bible study. I am Miss Renee and this is Zachariah and we are in the middle of a very special week this week. It is Holy Week, which is a week that we celebrate significant moments in Jesus's life in Jerusalem leading up to the Passion into Easter. And personally, I love going to Mass every night for Holy Week and celebrating those moments, feeling that progression as we lead up to Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and finally to Easter. And I, so I'm really missing out on that this week and I know you are too, but even though we can't go into the walls of our church, we can still celebrate together. And so if you are a member of Holy Innocence, then you should have in the mail gotten a packet of service bulletins and a, an agape fellowship meal which is a special liturgy that has some prayers that you can say around the table as you all have dinner. And we're all gonna do that at six o'clock tomorrow. So if you want to be in community with us and do that too, and you didn't get yours in the mail, then send me an email at children at holyinnocence.org and I will get that to you right away. Um, so uh, let's dive into our Bible study. If you don't have your Bible, um, ready? Why don't you go ahead and grab it because we're going to read that. Um, we're talking about faith today and faith is when you believe in something that you can't see and we have to have a lot of faith to believe in Jesus. You know even the original disciples they still had to have a lot of faith to believe that Jesus was the Son of God but at least you know, they could see him. They could reach out and touch him. They could poke him. They could see the miracles that he did. So I wonder if that would make it easier to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. You know, the disciples, all of them in the end believed, but some of them were not on board from the very beginning. One of the disciples was named Nathaniel, and it took him a little bit to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. You know, we don't know a lot about Nathaniel. Um, he's not mentioned a lot of times, and what we do know is that he is a friend of Philip's, and um, that Philip is the one that told Nathaniel about Jesus. So let's take a look, turn in your Bibles to John chapter one, verses 43 to 46, and we're gonna see how Nathaniel heard about Jesus and what his initial response was. So John chapter one, verse 43. It's Mark, um, Mark. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. So we see that Philip and Nathanael had both read the writings about Jesus, about the Messiah, and they, they were expecting the Messiah, but they had very um, different reactions when they came across Jesus. And Nathaniel said, kind of questioned Jesus coming from Nazareth. And that is because Nazareth was a small town. It was rural. And um, maybe some people thought it was too simple of a place for the Son of God to come from. And definitely no one expected that the Messiah, the Son of God, would come from such a simple and common place. 
So this made Nathaniel really question that Jesus was the Son of God. Um, so let's look at verse 47 through 50, and we're going to see at what an encounter with Jesus did for Nathaniel. So verses 47 through 50. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see even greater things than these. So we see that Nathaniel's weakness was his disbelief. He couldn't quite wrap his mind around believing that Jesus was the Son of God without some kind of sign. So Jesus knowing his weakness told him something that only he would know to prove that he was who he said he was that's our train our train comes by and it might be kind of loud it's time for the oreos all right so i have here a package of oreos so zachariah how do you know that there are Oreos in this package. Because it's Oreos. Because it's Oreos? How do you know it's Oreos? Okay, so you can read on here that it says Oreos, right? So that might indicate that there are in fact Oreos inside this package. What else could we do? We could look at the picture. That might show us what's inside. This and what inside the cookie is right here. Yeah, you can see the picture. You, could, this, you might be able to smell through the package. You might be able to smell cookies. that there are cookies in here. Or maybe if you feel it, you could feel that there are Oreos in here. There's bumpiness. There's Oreos. They're bumpy, so there might be Oreos in here. So you might not be able to see the Oreos with your eyes, but you know that they are there, right? The Oreos, you know, that you can see the Oreo because the Oreos are right. You can see the picture, but you can't see the actual Oreo, right? So you might not be able to see with your eyes that there are Oreos here, but you know that they're there, right? It's the same for us as followers of Jesus Christ. And so like you can't see through a car. You can't see through a car. That's right. So there's other ways to experience Jesus even though that we can't see Jesus. Can you think of any way that you can experience Jesus? No. Or know that Jesus is there? So we could experience Jesus maybe through creation. You know a lot of people can feel the presence of God if you go outside and you kind of feel the calm and the stillness early in the morning or maybe later in the night um, or if you, you know, see flowers bloom or um, the trees and the wind the wind ruffling the leaves of the trees uh, so you can experience Jesus in creation that way or maybe when you read your Bible then you feel especially close to God and also through prayer and through worship are ways that we can experience Jesus. You know, it says in the Bible, in John chapter 20, um, Jesus says to one of the disciples, you believe because you've seen me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. And that's us, that's you and me. We haven't seen Jesus face to face but we know that Jesus is there and that Jesus loves us and cares deeply for us.
So let's take a moment to prayer to pray before we wrap up and continue on our Holy Week journey. So if you will get out your prayer hands, prayer hands, holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your infinite love and for your infinite grace. God, we thank that we thank you that you have walked before us in this holy week and that you have seen the way forward. God, in a time that gives us so much anxiety and so much uncertainty, God, we thank you that you are unchanging and that your promises are always there and that you always hold true. Now, oh God, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us every day for our families and for our friends and for the gifts of technology that keep us connected even in the midst of our staying at home. So we praise you and we love you and um, we look forward to our coming days in Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Saturday and finally on Easter when we see that you are indeed risen. Um, in your holy and precious name we pray, amen. So thank you for joining us for Bible study tonight, and we hope to see you next week.